Hello and welcome to the 1am Free Practice Grand Prix, otherwise known as the Australian Grand Prix in 2024. I'm Sagan. I'm Ajax. We're here for the predictions. Oh yeah. Let's go. First attempt intro. <laughs> that's, a new, <laughs> that's a new one. Okay. Your how, How's your opinion on the, on the Australian Grand Prix circuit? Oh, uh, well... I have such nostalgia for Australia because obviously um, it was pretty much, you know, the first one on every single race. Uh, however, I never thought it was the best for the every uh, to start every single season. I thought it was quite a boring Grand Prix when I was younger. Uh, they've obviously made changes that I'm pretty, pretty thankful for. I think the changes are pretty nice, uh, but I still I'm not in love with the track. Despite, you know, the the main thing for me was I used to play it always in the F1 games as the first race. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was always great. But yeah, otherwise, it's, 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 I don't really love it. But I do like the changes. I will say that. Yeah, definitely. The changes have made it better. Not too much for real life. I, I would say the games, the games make the circuit enjoyable more. Is, I think yes. real life still <laughs> has uh, some issues for overtaking, um, even in this grand, grand effect era, which is supposed to promote great overtaking, and we instead we got the complete opposite of it. And I feel like we got less overtakes every single year ever since 2021. Uh, also, the fact they they wanted to put so many DRS zones in this track and. It just yeah. they did it in the end because it was dangerous. Yeah, they removed like at least one, and the and like the back straight they made. Uh, I I forgot which turn it is, but it it was like before that it was like a chic chicane that was very very awkward in the F one games that I remember, and now it's just straight line speed all the way down to the quick chicane, which is which is very quick. It's like the quickest chicane in the, in the entire calendar, I think. Uh, and yeah. It's it's better, not not but not a great. Still, still could use some improvements. Okay, I guess we can move into the predictions themselves. And yeah, uh, <laughs> I I don't know if I'm gonna watch. Uh, okay. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I personally don't know if I'm gonna watch. Uh, even the third practice, honestly, uh, may just not wake up for it on Saturday. Uh, that sounds like waking up for practice too, because that is uh, that is basically where I, when I wake up for work tomorrow. But free, free practice one uh, two two thirty a.m. for me, one to one thirty a.m. for you. I don't think yes. either of us is waking for it. A hundred percent no. I might still be awake to be fair, so that'll be nice. Yeah, you're going. Uh, you're going to sleep. Uh, you're going. to Sorry, <laughs> you're gonna go to sleep later than me, definitely. Um, yeah, just not Saturday. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm able to stay awake for free practice, free on the uh, two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Definitely understand yeah. that. Even the race itself, uh, five a.m. for me, four a.m. for you. Adam uh, must be very, very on. Uh, um, not pleasing. Oh, I'm definitely not going to be up for that. <laughs> okay, so you're not going to watch the Grand Prix? Uh, I will watch the highlights. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to carry the reaction, I guess. Uh, yeah. I well, I so I yeah, I I go to bed at like three a.m. on Saturdays, Saturday nights. Uh, so yeah, to wake up uh, like. One hour, two hours later, not a good idea. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Okay, um, prioritizing sleep over a Dutch anthem is probably the better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I guess we can finally move to the predictions themselves, and I don't think we're gonna be bold this time. We just saw two two Red Bull dominations, uh, two specific Max Verstappen dominations, as we. We're in for another pretty boring season, let's be real. Um, yes, 100%. So, so yeah. Um, I feel like I'm going to start this time. It's, you always start. I, I feel like I'm going to 
I'm putting you in an advantage this time. I'm going to start with Max just up in pole position. What a shock, you're right? Uh, <laughs> you can predict something else to, to uh, perhaps gain points over me. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that didn't work out as a joke as I, as I intended. Um, okay, um, your pole position. <laughs> Hello? Uh, okay, did you just not hear the entire thing, what it was saying? My internet crashed, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, to recap, I just said that uh, Max is up in pole position for me, big, extreme shock, obviously, and you're you're ready to put your pole position. Uh, um, I agree with Max Verstappen. It may shock you. Uh, yeah, kind of shocking. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of a rookie, so... Uh, yeah. Bit of a surprise, but uh, yes, I, I definitely agree with Max Verstappen in that, <laughs> that placement. I mean, get used to us predicting him there every single time. That's yeah. that's what I would say. We're just Second pretty... place, however, a bit more interesting. Yeah, indeed. We're just, we're just very bold this time, pitting the, the very inexperienced and very uh, unproven driver of Max Verstappen in pole position. Did, that's... did the both Mercedes qualify first and second here last year? Uh, they qualified second and third, but Max got ah, there you go. They overtook him, yes. Yeah, they both overtook him at the start, but obviously, Red Bull had a uh, different kind of race pace for them. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, P2, the interesting one, and the P1 for uh, F1 with and Max Verstappen, in my opinion, Charles Leclerc, and uh, not, not, I'm not, uh, not gonna not predict Charles in top two after his qualifying in top two like seven times in a row now he's just the qualifying god and right now i don't see i, I don't really see anyone challenging him for p2 unless it's uh obviously perez and the red bull is just too quick for charles yeah 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 but uh, i actually have a difference of opinion now i was i obviously think Leclerc will do do very well and he, his qualifying pace is amazing but i am going to put perez in p2 uh his qualifying wasn't that far off in uh, saudi arabia he obviously prefers street tracks but from fact australia is a street track technically uh, <laughs> and plays and drives i said plays there but drives very similar to one and i just think that red bull is going to be quicker than quick at the current time so i'm taking a risk i did the same in the saudi grand prix i predicted him there uh, yeah. And yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it once again. I just think that Red Bull's going to be ultra mega quick. And the Ferraris did not have the best race here last year. Um, their pace was a bit down, so I don't think this track suits them as much. Yeah, I'm just uh, falling back on 2022. Charles Leclerc Grand Slam. So <laughs> no, yeah. that's two years ago. That was yeah. two years ago. What what can change from one year to another? Yeah, true. Um, true. <laughs> I just feel like I just feel like Ferraris are just still gonna have that edge over the three teams behind them. So, and, and obviously bad. Red Bull. I just don't trust Perez in qualifying anymore. Even though he's qualifying in the top five, kind of still. I just he, he, he can put up a stinker every once in a while. Last year it was like every second race, pretty much. That uh, we saw him not getting into Q three or even getting out in Q one. Mm. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually predict Perez to not be the top five, and I'm gonna straight up predict that because last year it was pretty much this this race was the turning point in the championship, like not quite like uh, like we would see a huge gap for like obviously Perez won the next three yeah. after that the Baku sprint and race, so they were like almost equal points after Baku, and then. Obviously, Miami happened, and first time I won the <laughs> ten Grand Prix in a row. So, so I think this this Grand Prix that does just will not suit Perez as much, and I don't feel like he's gonna qualify well, nor race well. I think he's gonna be the top five in the Grand Prix, but I don't think like it's gonna be a podium. But I'm 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 getting getting ahead of myself this uh this one a bit. Uh, my P three is Carlito Sainz. I feel like he's gonna oh. pull out to the Grand Prix and just straight up put it into P3 right behind Char right behind Charles after that surgery. 
is going to be up there on pace. And even if he isn't, and even if after practice one, he decides to not race because of obviously the complications with the surgery, Oliver Behrman will put it in P3 with uh, instead. So <laughs> I got uh, this uh, prediction myself. And yeah, uh, you can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now I think I think science is gonna struggle this weekend. I think coming off a of surgery, you're a bit more defrazzled. Obviously this is just my prediction. He might not be. Uh it's gonna hurt more to even drive. So uh I'm I'm gonna put science a bit lower than that. Uh but you know, I'm gonna agree that Claire's obviously very quick on one lap pace and I do think he's gonna do well this Grand Prix. Uh so yes, the Claire is my next pick. Uh, going after your second. I'm trying to earn points here. I need to earn already back six points. So uh, going a few things different is probably the, for the best for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, you have a pretty good chance there. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I should go, go a bit bolder than you to give you a chance because I'm already like, kind of quite a bit ahead. I'm going go no, no, to go for Oscar Piastri for P4. Uh, the Australian magic is gonna gonna bring the McLaren to P4 somehow in qualifying. To be fair, he qualified like P4 in uh, for Saudi Arabia, I think as well. So not that unrealistic. And, and yeah, I just yeah, feel, yeah, like, uh, feel like McLaren will suit this track. It's a lot of high speed corners, which they are really quick on. We saw in Saudi Arabia, they were pretty much on par, if not quicker than Red Bull in uh, in the sector one. So maybe kind of carry that pace of the third best team to this track yeah it's also his home race you know there's going to be a lot of people out there to watch him uh two two drivers in australia when was the last time that happened it must have been ricardo weber did um, they have a race in the se- yeah, at the same time i'm trying to I think th- i think they did in 20, 2013 because ricardo was in torosso and uh mark weber was red bull I, I may be wrong i don't know no, no, I think you might be. You're probably right. Um, so yeah, that it'll be it'll be a big big showcase. Obviously, they've taken to Bottas as well <laughs> in quite a funny way. So uh, yeah, very excited, and I do agree. I think he's going to have a good good race. I am very tempted to put him there, but as I say, I need to earn points. I'm going to agree with you on a McLaren driver though, and put Norris there instead. Uh, I think Norris is just he needs to. Buck up his ideas after being beaten by Piastri last week, and uh, this will be the race to do it. Uh, Piastri's home race, you know, really, really show he's still the number one driver. Uh, not that I don't think anyone's questioning that, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I still feel like Norris is just a tiny bit ahead of Piastri, but Piastri is definitely closing in. And I think at the end of the at the end of this season, we could maybe see them on par with each other. Perhaps uh, I feel like Piastri still has a lot of a lot of room in, to improve, and obviously, it's still his second season. He just started his second season. He's already ahead of Lando in the championship. I know two races in, but still, it's very impressive. So, yeah, my pick for P five is Lando Norris, and I was very tempted to put George or Fernando there as well, but mm. I, I I would feel wrong to not put Lando in top five in qualifying. Considering you go to Piastri and P4, this would feel very wrong. Probably losing a point here because of it, because I feel like Alonso or Russell, who have more chance to be in top five, but uh, not top five, uh, in fifth place specifically. But just picking Lando, so uh, you're going to pick a different one. I will be picking a different one. I will be picking Sites here. As I oh. said, I don't think it'll do amazing, uh, but I still think it'll be solid. I don't, yeah. I still think the McLaren is clearly the second quickest car, so I still think he'll have a solid race. I wasn't going to put him that far down. Uh, it was a trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a legit fire that you're going to put Sainz out of the top five, so uh, good for you. <laughs> Sainz in the top five is, is, is pretty realistic. Um, so, yeah. Yes, yeah, I agree. Uh, back to even more realistic. P1 for the Grand Prix. What a shock, right? <laughs> Holy moly! You are risking it for the biscuit. Yeah, there. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it this, this big that I'm gonna say he's gonna equal his own record 
for the most Grand Prix one in a row of 10 is going to match his own record and win another 10 in a row in Australia. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, yeah, I, I am going to agree. Obviously, we're not we're not taking any risks there. So I will also go for Stappen in P1 as the fastest driver in the grid. Uh, I do think, I reckon there's going to be a crash off the start. So I'm not sure whether to take that, you know, I don't, uh, like last year, we saw on the restart, there was a crash. Yeah. I reckon, on, I because I reckon there'll be a restart. I reckon there'll be another crash on the start because people will be nervy. People will be nervy that they're gonna have. It's gonna happen again. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's my. And we'll get to my weird prediction. I've, I'm pretty sure that's already uh, zipped in for me there. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think for Stapp will be okay no matter what's what happens at the stars. So okay. Uh... I, I don't know nothing to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, fair. That's fair. Yeah, not not putting Max in the P one would be just a lo- loss of points on the slightest point. Yes. Yeah. If he wins this Grand Prix, he's gonna win. He's gonna be the winner of the last twenty out of twenty one races, which is a completely ridiculous stat, honestly. <laughs> yes. Like last twenty one races and he's winning twenty of them. It's just. The, the number's crazy. Um, yeah, P2. My P2. And keep Charles in there for P2. He's going to have a solid race, finish P2, and yeah, just um, the average Charles race and P2 just not nothing really to do up ahead of him, and I'm going to control the pace uh, of the guys behind Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, see, I'm going Paris, so we're, we're sticking very much to our guns here uh, yeah. off the first first one. So, yeah, you, you're, you're Max, I'm Paris. Yeah. And um, you're Leclerc, I'm Paris, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Perez, I don't think that needs an explanation either. <laughs> Pretty much just... Yeah, I, th- I think, I think yeah. it's just the quickest car. Yeah. Uh, I will say in my predictions, I'm not. I'm going to act like there isn't a crash because I don't want to risk it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do think there'll be a crash. Okay. Um, yeah, Perez. Putting Perez in the uh, in these predictions, honestly, the explanation only explanation needed is that Red Bull is quick. That's it. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Then that is what I'm sticking to. Because I do think you're right. I do think Leclerc is obviously quick as a driver and so on. But Red Bull is quick. <laughs> yeah, Red Bull is quick. That's the that's the main sentence of this entire season and a yes. half, pretty much. Or actually, two season and, and a half, if you're counting the entire season of 2024. Yeah. Um, yes, true. Yeah, yeah, it's too long, too long. Yeah, and 2025, probably the same thing. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two more years of the daily outro of the Dash Anthem, just the usual. P3. P3. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spice it up. I, I said I'm going to go bolder than I usually do, so you can catch up a bit. I'm going to go with Piastri for P3. Australian on the podium in Australia happening after like 10 years or maybe even more. I don't even think Weber was, I don't think Weber was ever on the podium in Australia. I may be wrong, but before that, the last Australian on the podium here may, may well be just like in the eighties or something like that. So yeah, Australians happy after a long time having an Australian on the podium. That would be a great. It uh, would be amazing. Yeah, it yeah. would be amazing. Be I do great. agree with you there. Yeah, a great, great scene. Um, I hope it happens. I hope it happens. And he's been he, he's shown pace so far at the start of the season. I feel he felt like he fell off after the Qatar victory last season, but he has shown a lot of uh, a lot of pace since uh, the comeback. So I'm, I'm I'm hoping for him. He he proves me wrong uh, again. Very boring Leclerc. I uh, very much just going for the three quickest drivers at this point. <laughs> <laughs> But I've got to be safe. I've got to. I've got to stick to my guns and try and uh, get out that victory. Yeah. Get those points. Yeah, we we can equal up a bit. Yeah. Um. We just said about Piastri last season. The the thing that I, I observed about Piastri is that he struggled the most on tracks he's never raced out before. 
which I think this season, since he already drove on all the tracks before, I think he's gonna do much better over the over the entire season. Uh, so yeah, la- last year, obviously after after Qatar, it was like all the Grand Prix that were never in F two or other junior series up until Abu Dhabi, obviously, which yeah, Abu Dhabi Piastri qualified like P three on the grid, so yeah, just uh, pretty my pretty my point a bit. Yeah, I'm just a Piastri believer, and I honestly, if Hulkenberg retires in the like next few years, or basically whenever he retires, I think I'm gonna become a Piastri fan, or uh, like full on, he's gonna <laughs> become my favorite driver. I just feel like it's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. 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 Okay. No, I, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I, I wanted to continue. P4. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, my bad. Lando Norris. Oh, you really are believing in the McLarens on this track, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah I think fair enough. Is this is this worthy of a the most impressive team? If if McLaren finished P3 and P4. Yes. Yes, I agree. Okay, then I'm putting them in my most impressive team because I honestly didn't know which one to put. <laughs> I, I do think like I it, it's it's sort of like yes, we sort of talked about them being the third quickest team, but they are beating two of the drivers of the teams quicker than them. And I would say Ferrari and uh, Red Bull are quite substantially quicker than them at this point. So, you know, beating those two drivers would be impressive. Yeah. Your P4? Oh, okay. Uh, (laughs) My P4. Uh, See, I reckon, going off my logic, that it's going to hurt for science. It's going to hurt to drive as well. So I'm trying to take that into account. Let's be safe. I'm going to go Norris as well. I'm literally going to, just going to end up going my my other section. So yeah, I'll, I'll put Norris in there as well. I think he'll he'll do well. Okay. Is that boring? Yes. We we both agree. Just Norris I mean, and P4. But <laughs> if you're really believing it, I mean, why not go for it? But yeah, exactly. You can exactly. can gain points over me. But if you really think Norris is gonna be finish P4, you're just not gonna lose points because of it. That's fair. Yeah, I was I was thinking him there anyway. So yeah, uh, and yeah, so yeah, my P5 is. Sergio Perez is going to come to uh, come from a back qualifying up all the way to, up to P5, which is not great for Red Bull, but I mean, he's still going to finish P2 in the in the Drive Championship at, yes, this, yeah. at this rate. So, yeah, uh, cheeky P5 here for Perez. <laughs> um, I don't know if that was the greatest wording, but he's just going to sneak up into the top five in my predictions. <laughs> and fair enough. Fair enough. Uh... P uh, five for me. I think I'm going to go Piastri. Uh, you know, it's not and it's not an Australian in the top three, but it's an Australian in the top five. So I'm going to, going to safely put Piastri there. I think he'll be quicker than Sites on race day, but uh, not quicker than the rest of the top, the established top five, should we say? Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. I think it will be it will be a good day for Australians no matter what. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, definitely. Fastest lap. Well, the last time we actually saw a, a different uh, different fastest lap holder can there be was Charles Leclerc who got the fastest lap on the last lap. Probably not that like. It was a great lap from Charles, but as we saw, for, uh, as we heard from Max, he was they had cold tires at the end of the Grand Prix. Just the Red Bull is yeah. really so good at, at managing their tires, they just couldn't warm them up at the end. So Charles could use that Ferrari qualifying speed uh, the last lap. And I feel like here, I'm going to do the same. Charles 4, sorry, I could be the wrong thing. Charles 4, fastest lap. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I find hot fastest lap so difficult, and obviously we know I had a stinker last week uh, <laughs> with my predictions beyond the top five. Uh, I'm gonna go with Hamilton because I think he'll just be in an area where he can pit 
uh, last few laps and get a faster slap, if uh, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think I think that's a that's a good good idea. <laughs> okay, a good idea. Okay, I'm gonna judge. But yeah, go I'm, ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain what I just did. I just thought you were gonna do it with Max, so I tried to pick a different one so you could gain points over me. <laughs> <laughs> you just picked Hamilton out of nowhere, and I'm like, what? No, I'll be honest. He was in my head since the start. Okay. And since I looked at all, because obviously I just go down the list and try and think of everyone beforehand, uh, before you even pick. Um, and I, I I was just like, I reckon. See, um, we'll get to my least impressive driver. I think that's going to be Russell. And I was like, oh. uh, Hamilton will probably be far enough, far enough ahead. Okay. Okay, uh, that's an interesting pick. Yeah, getting to the least impressive team. So, into the last few predictions, my least impressive team is... And I actually forgot which one I, which one I wanted. Uh, which, which team was banned? Speed. I think it was Haas. I'm going to pick Haas. And listen to my reasoning. They're not officially the sixth fastest team, standing six in the constructors, the only team out of the top five to score points. And yeah, they mm. they have a tendency of not being regarded as the greatest team, obviously, this season. They proved everyone wrong, and they're at legit fighting for occasional one point if Stroll crashes. Like Saudi Arabia, so <laughs> so yeah. If I'm putting half of the least impressive team, I I think they're gonna struggle compared to the rest of the midfield. And I feel like they're gonna be towards the back of that pack, so not really close to points. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I get you. Uh, I still think you're gonna struggle when uh, we come to review the race to. Uh... <laughs> to legitimize that, considering I mean, if it's like if it's really like P thirteen and P fourteen, I'm not getting a point, but I'm just saying that if they yeah yeah okay okay if their pace is like really really bad and they somehow like the whole like does something ridiculous and gets into like top twelve or top eleven, uh, I would say still that deserves a point in that in that sense that the has was not impressive as a team, which as a driver doing a Doing a thing. Okay, well, I still think you're going to struggle to legitimize that when okay. we come to it. Okay, fair. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put Mercedes because uh, I just think they'll be very slow. I think they'll be perhaps slower than the Astons uh, and more towards that midfield area. I know they were really quick here last year. I don't know why. I've just got a hankering that they're not going to do very well. But let's be honest, based on last week, I uh, have the opposites curse. So maybe I'm just trying to make sure they do well. <laughs> okay. I mean, based on your predictions, you're putting the least impressive team for Mercedes. So I assume Hamilton is the most impressive driver because of uh, getting the fastest lap on the least impressive team. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think, I, as I say, I think it'll be just be miles behind, like uh, the top uh, six, and then maybe, maybe behind the Astons, and he'll just pit like two laps before to get the uh, fastest lap on soft tires. I don't think that's entirely impressive to do. Okay. Like, okay. I, I, I'd say uh, anywhere down to like. I'm trying to think who's the actual third quickest team this season. It's not third quickest, sixth quickest team this season. Anywhere down to, I, I reckon Albon could pit at, at, on the Williams and get close to the fastest lap. So, you know, I don't think that's him being impressive. I just think that you know he's got a, he's got a, he's the only one going on softs. I think that's my point of view. Yeah. Uh, good reasoning, honestly. It could happen. I'm not saying it, uh, it couldn't, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Least impressive team. Oh, sorry. Least impressive driver for me is. Um, actually, which, <laughs> which one? I'm... Okay. I'm gonna. I don't want to go for a safe pick. Mm, I'm gonna for go for yeah, Alonso. I'm risky. I'm gonna <laughs> go for Alonso. Just, just. Oh, okay. I'm not basing this off anything. I'm just randomly picking a driver that I feel like if if they 
underperform, it's gonna give me a point in this case. And honestly, Alonso not finishing the points is a straight up a point for me, unless yeah. Aston is like the slowest car on the grid. Well, I'm going to go for Russell because I think he is going to cause a crash or crash out himself. So, is this your bold prediction as well? No. <laughs> Just think Russell is going to crash. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. I mean, it would be fair. No, I mean, he's pretty bold, but I'm going out there. I'm going out there. I just, yeah, I, don't, I, I, don't, I think he, obviously, Russell's a very good driver. I just don't think that he's going to have the best weekend. That's that's my main yeah. thing. I mean, if you're having the vibe of a certain driver underperforming, it's completely fine. I have a big Alonso, which is like the, the other pick for. Well, I think Alonso and Russell are pretty much in the same league right now in terms of pace relative to the star field. So yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Most impressive team. Okay, so since you agree that uh, the P three and P four can work, I have to pick McLaren. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I'm gonna go for Toro Rosso. I think they were very slow last week. And I think they'll be quick this week. I will often go for Toro Rosso this season. You'll see when I don't know a team, <laughs> I'll just go for Toro Rosso. Is this, <laughs> is this indicating points? Uh, or close to it. I think uh, what you'll see is my most impressive driver is a Toro Rosso driver. So I think I think that's the main thing behind it. If they finish P11 and P12, it's like very questionable but i guess it could work but it did, did 11 p12 based on what they did last week though you've got to base that yeah. you know yeah, maybe if they both finish they, in the top 12 like both they've been pretty recently. terrible recently yeah and yeah, that's more on ricardo in my opinion because Tsunoda was it might have been if if magnuson didn't do that whole thingy uh, to know that would finish p11 at least yeah yeah you got you uh, got that but, uh but you know they what they were thirteen, fourteenth in Bahrain, and then uh, that was most uh, of the strategy. So <laughs> you know. yeah, tr- uh, you know. But I, I, I'm agree. I'm I'm agreeing. Basically, you know, one eleven, one maybe thirteenth, twelfth, and I think that's pretty pretty yes. solid. So I mean, Sonoda was fourteenth, Daniel sixteenth last race. I know it was obviously. Why, but um, yeah. Yeah. with Sonoda, but you know, I just think uh, them breaking into the top twelve would be would be a solid week for them. And yeah, I do think I think uh, yeah. spoilers. Daniel will probably just sneak into the points. Oh, okay. I, I think I have an idea. Who's your most impressive driver? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking about Bahrain, uh, the last. Uh, yeah, when when you said that. Uh, they finished like P13 and P14. It was another race they finished behind Magnuson <laughs> because of sure. Magnuson's defense. Yeah, if they qualify ahead of, ahead of K-Mag, they, <laughs> they may just deliver a good result. Other than that, I don't feel like... Yeah. Uh, basically, their entire weekend revolves if they get ahead of Magnuson. Screw <laughs> that. Okay. Most impressive driver for me... Um... Hmm. Okay, this is difficult. I'm gonna pick Piastri because based on my prediction, uh, I feel like if he, if he gets a podium in Australia, I think that's pretty much guaranteed pick for him as a pursuit driver. I'm gonna go with Piastri. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. It's a, it's a, a good pick. A good pick. Uh, as as we just talked about, mine mine is Daniel. Uh. Because it's 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 Australia, right? We're we're both sort of going for Australian drivers. We're backing them to do well in their own nation. I think the Aussie crowd will be just so behind them both that they're going to do really well this weekend, and I'm very excited to see it, especially with Daniel because uh, he's had a few rough, rough and tumble events, we will say. So yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, Ricardo really needs to bounce back after those two. Well, not ideal weekends. He got destroyed by Sonoda in both qualifying session and yeah, it's just just not looking very good for Ricardo. I honestly expected more from him, even though I we both predicted Sonoda to beat Ricardo, but we didn't think it it would be this this big of a gap between them. 
Yes, yeah, exactly. We both we both were expecting a lot more a lot more from uh, Daniel. Yeah. I think I think I, I was expecting him to be right alongside him. So, uh, but it was just the last race. They were they were very close to the race before. So, yeah, I'll, 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 there's a lot more of the season to go. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what Ricardo can do for uh, for well. Pretty much his future because uh, he either gets the Red Bull seed or is pretty much out of the sport. I don't really feel like there's much much place to be for, for him to be like. Uh, is, does it stick to Torosso for next year? Like, why if they have so many drivers waiting for a seed? We have uh, obviously Lawson, which is pretty much who is pretty much guaranteed for one of the seats. There are like many Red Bull juniors. Uh, yeah, like Isaac Hachar, obviously, uh, has been doing the greatest in F2 this season, but still a very talented driver who got uh, some great lap times from the Alpha Terry in the Mexican uh, Mexican practice one test, I think that was last year. So yeah, there, was, there were a lot of rookies down in the practice. So. Yeah, uh, back to the topic, extra roll prediction. My extra roll prediction is. Uh, and this I, I'm putting uh, both cars uh, in case uh, oh, okay. Sensen. I feel like the other Ferrari will have a crash this weekend I, I want to I'm going to point out uh, the, you know I wanted to put it uh, put it as an incident for, for uh, like at first but yeah, I, yeah it's really difficult to to explain what an incident is I just yes. feel like it's like a major driver error. Is it error. scraping off the wall? Is it just... Yeah, it, it's like a major driver error that impacts their weekend. Or like a crash in practice or uh, like spinning on into the gravel and qualifying or whatever. Like something more severe, not just a lockup in the race or, you know. Just something... I, I don't know if crash is a good word. I just want to like... I, I'm going to... Call it as a major driver error. That's a better wording, in my opinion. Just uh, got a Ferrari not having the greatest, and that's why I didn't pick signs for for my Grand Prix. I feel like yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's that just, makes sense. It's just based on that that signs crashes in the race because uh, obviously unfortunate injury that uh, happened during the surgery. Yeah, I'm not saying signs is a bad driver or he is crash prone, uh, but it must be difficult driving after such a surgery that quickly obviously yes exactly alex had i think one more week to to recover from his own so so yeah good for carlos if he gets to race and d- d- does well but i don't feel like uh he's gonna be at his 100 percent. yeah 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 i agree i agree um i i'm gonna can i put red flag yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, so I'm yeah, 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 but wait, wait, wait. Red flags, as in what? Like the entire weekend? Restart. No, restart. Race restart. That, that's oh, a bad so, way to so put red, it. So red, red flag during the race. Yeah. Re- race restart would it would it be, right? Oh, so race restart as a safety car as well, then? No, no. I, I mean, like, grid restart, where they, they all have to line up on the grid again. So... You're making that even like, even more unlikely for yourself because that would mean uh, yeah, a standing, it's extra bold. So yeah, it's standing start for a red flag restart, which yeah, is like okay, stand standing uh, start standing restart, should I put? And we'll know why I'm in. Yeah, this is extremely I, I, bold. I think that's going to happen. Uh, well, how many standing restarts did we have last time? I thought it was more than like two. We had so, like we had like three red flags, but I, I feel like the last one just didn't like, like did, we didn't even get to finish the race or something like that. Just yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, based uh, on so I ignore that yeah. one. But I I think there's going to be a lot of incidents this weekend. Uh, I think Australia is quite difficult to drive. Uh, we we see drivers make errors there constantly. I think throughout the years, there's been so many examples. You know, Stroll is obviously an obvious one. I think Ricardo's had incidents there in the past. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different ways to crash out, and then you have multiple pli- 
pile ups like we saw last year, which I, yeah. as I said before, I expect to happen. So, yeah, I'm expecting a, a standing restart. I mean, completely fair. Uh, it's like thinking, thinking about it more, it's not at unlikely, especially considering last year we had so many red flags. I think it was like the record or tied record for the most red flags in a single race last year in Australia as well. Oh, oh damn. I don't remember the exact count. I think it was at least three, maybe even four. Just a lot of red flags. So yeah, if if you're getting this point, good for you. Honestly, you need some points over you. me. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Forty five minutes in. We actually forty minutes only. Uh we can wrap this up. Uh any last thoughts? Uh I hope it's a I hope it's a fun weekend. I hope we get a few shocks. Uh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm positive. Should I say? Yeah, and I'm 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 the opposite of that. I think it's gonna be like <laughs> one of the worst races we've seen in a while. Pretty much like Bahrain level, boring. So, yeah, uh, anything better than that is uh, is a good for me. So, uh, well, let's see. Australian Grand Prix 2024 in uh, four days from now. Well, tomorrow's practice, obviously, uh, in the night. But we're not watching that. <laughs> And yeah. Um, no, 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 definitely not. Let's hope for a good race. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you want to see from us moving forward. And until next time, see ya. Bye.